Amazon's key has another vulnerability, Apple source code gets leaked, and crypto mining hits government sites. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings! Hello everyone, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for February 13th, 2018, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Happy Valentine's Day, if you are celebrating. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire and that is always the best way to support the show and will help us reach our next goal. And now, it's time for some news, starting with Amazon. So on Sunday of last week, MG on Twitter posted an intriguing video showing what looked like a de-authentication attack that used a Raspberry Pi against the Amazon Key delivery service. In the video, he hid the Raspberry Pi in a simple light fixture, and he left while a delivery person used the app to unlock the door and deliver a package. The delivery person locks the door through the app, at least they think they do, then they leave. And he later came back after getting a notification that the delivery attempt was made, and he got his Raspberry Pi, and then he steps right into the house because the door was still unlocked. The remainder part of the video shows from the user's point of view, unlocking the door fine, but never getting the option to lock the door on the app until eventually receiving a timeout error and an audible door locking sound. It turns out that the door is still unlocked. This attack uses Amazon Key, which combines a smart IoT door lock with the Amazon Cloud Cam security camera. So I reached out to MG to learn more about this vulnerability. I asked him about if the deauth attack happened when the lock is locking. And he said, quote, that is what the RhinoSec team did a few months ago, and this is slightly different. I deauth earlier while the lock is actively unlocking. This prevents the lock from sending back the I have successfully unlocked notification. That is what caused the app to freak out and fail back to saying that it is locked. I also added an audible mechanical locking motor sound to further add to the illusion. Now the Raspberry Pi equipped with a portable battery, a wireless radio dongle, a speaker, and a case will keep that deauthentication active until it is finally retrieved by the attacker and turned off. According to MG, the attacker would have a few seconds to pull it off while the device is disconnected. The attack does not require being connected to the target's Wi-Fi network. They would just need to be in the wireless proximity, so not necessarily super close, but within range. To detect the unlocking happening, MG looked for a burst of wireless packet frames when the camera turns on. Specifically, it's Amazon's OUI or their organizational unique identifier. For Key to work with their camera, the camera auto turns on when a delivery attempt is made, so the user gets a notification about the front door and then they can watch their video on their phone. MG mentions monitoring for Zigbee traffic would be more precise since that happens from the camera to the lock. But Zigbees are not on 802.11 wireless, so this would require a little bit more money to detect. A hacker F for example, would probably suffice, though I have not personally looked into it. Now it does sound kind of scary, but could it be used in common scenarios? So Amazon drivers are supposed to check and make sure that a door is locked before moving on, and if not locked, supposedly a driver would not be able to deliver any more packages until the door is actually locked at that previous location. So this is more of a consumer app problem, which Amazon has released a fix for. If a user runs into their house for example, after they forgot something or they needed to drop off a package real quick for themselves and then run back to their car, for example, then the attack could work. Now, MG says, quote, to give Amazon credit, now that I have discussed it with them, this does seem less applicable to the delivery scenario because the drivers have a more strict app and delivery protocol. Unfortunately, I did not have access to the driver app to verify. So this seems much more applicable to the consumer user side, and the consumer app is what they rolled out fixes for. As I mentioned, RhinoSec did a deauth last year that prevented the lock from closing. It was a very manual attack and Amazon fixed it. The fact that a deauth are thrown at a different time was still a problem several months later seems to say some things about the development practices. Now MG does bring up a very valid and good point. Why was this attack missed by Amazon? Amazon may have not fixed it because they consider this to not be a real life delivery scenario as they said in many different articles, but this is still a problem and it still persisted. It should still also be fixed. At least that's how I feel. As of two days ago, Amazon has now released updates for iOS and Android to mitigate this attack. 
On Wednesday of last week, a GitHub user posted code called iBoot to the code sharing website, which seemed to be core information that Apple's iPhones use to boot up into the operating system of the phone. Now this code is what verifies the iPhone is actually an iPhone and it makes iOS run, similar to how a BIOS works on a laptop or a desktop PC. Now this code could be used to bring back jailbreaking via tethering to computers, I remember those days, or it could push large vulnerabilities to the root of the device's hardware and or software. Now researchers could use it to find future problems that could rake in very large bug bounties from Apple to the sound of $200,000, or attackers could use it to find flaws that could crack encryption. Now Apple did send a DMCA takedown to GitHub the very next day, proving that the source code was real and legitimate. Now since it is from iOS 9, it is rather old. Apple states that the code was from three years ago, but the products do not rely on security of source code preferably. Now Apple does use several different layers of security for their products, such as the newer Secure Enclave processor chip, for example. Now while it was taken down off of GitHub, the code was available since 2017, and is probably still available now, with one user even posting it on Reddit. And even though it is old code, according to Apple, only 7% of users use iOS is older than iOS 10. So that still means around 70 million people could be affected. So if you have an iOS device, update your phone to the newest operating system if you can and if you have not already. Well, this is not the first time that we have heard about JavaScript libraries being altered, and it probably will not be the last, but this one is important because it involves CoinHive and crypto mining, as well as several different government affiliated websites across several different countries. Over the weekend, Scott Helm, a security researcher, wrote on his blog about a new crypto jacking problem affecting over 4,000 sites across the web. He was alerted when a friend's antivirus threw up warnings about a security affiliated site that had a crypto miner running on every single page on their domain. The 4,000 plus sites are listed via public www.com and I'll have that link below in the show notes for you. The crypto miner in this case was being run through a third party JavaScript library that was loaded on their website. So it was not actually hosted directly by the site themselves. The library was from a company called Text Help and their software Browse Aloud, which uses uses assistive technology to read websites to folks that need it, such as for the blind or if English is not your first language. TextHelp's code was altered to include a CoinHive crypto miner. So if any website called back to their library of code, they would also get the CoinHive miner. And according to TextHelp, this was a criminal act and they are pursuing an investigation with authorities. Now, Troy Hunt, a security researcher and creator of HaveIBeenPwned.com, pointed out that this affects US court websites, UK government websites, and a whole lot more. So how do you protect against this as a web admin? Well, as admins, you should add the SRI integrity attribute to your site to check for code modification. Also, having good content security policies should persist. And Troy goes into a whole lot more detail about the supply chain problem be between parties in his post, which is linked below. I recently asked my Patreon supporters how they felt about me covering cryptocurrency and exchange hacks, to which y'all overwhelmingly said yes, all the hacks, so thank you, patrons. I will definitely keep a keen eye out for those kind of stories. Everyone who supports ThreatWire over at patreon.com slash ThreatWire, y'all are the reason that we can keep on bringing you news every single week, and we are on our way to the next goal. We're super close now, which allows me to upgrade some of our equipment, but we will also open up a live video Q&A just for patrons each and every single month. And it doesn't matter what your level of contribution is, you will get access to that Q&A. Now, if you are already a patron, you get access to an audio RSS feed, which is exclusive just for you, first looks at show topics, polls, just like the one I did on cryptocurrency, discussions just for patrons, and a lot more. And any little bit helps us grow the show. So thank you again, really appreciate it. And hey, check out these amazing, cute, super adorable fur babies sent in by some of our Patreon supporters. They're adorable. Thank you so much. Check out the perk levels on Patreon. Thanks for keeping this show completely independent. And if you can't donate, hit that little subscribe button. We just hit 400K on youtube.com slash hack5. So thank you so much for subscribing. That was a huge goal. And with that, I am Shanna Morse, and I will see you on the internet.